meeting of Monday, September 23rd, 2013 of the Arlington Redevelopment Board. Um, we've, got a, in, we've got an interesting agenda tonight. Uh, not a lot on it as far as um, uh, different pieces of the agenda, but I think we might be spending a little bit of time on, on a few different things. So um, before we do that, I, I just wanted to, um, if I could, speak for the board in saying that um, uh, that we were very sorry to hear about the uh, death of Anne-Marie Casey, who was a um, longtime uh, member of the planning department here in Arlington, and a big uh, help to the Arlington Redevelopment Board. And we just want to express our um, condolences and uh, for her family and friends to know that our thoughts are with them. And uh, we're very saddened uh, to hear of her passing. So, um, for the board members, um, uh, Carol had sent it to me just so you know. Um, uh, services are, there'll be visiting hours tomorrow from 4 to 8 at Keefe Funeral Home over at, uh, across from St. Agnes. And then uh, the funeral will be on Wednesday uh, at 10 a.m. Uh, from uh, St. Agnes as well. So, but Carol, please express to the, the department certainly um, the board's Thank you. Um, condolences in, in hearing. So. I will. I appreciate that. So, so, um, so that's that's our sad news, and and uh, we're, we're going to move uh, directly into the first item of business. Um, the first item of business is a discussion around um, the Arlington Redevelopment Board uh, master plan and any objectives that we would like to um, make known uh, to the advisory committee or anything else. I think in just tasking <coughs> the advisory committee, we kind of made known that we were leaving them a, a very open field uh, to investigate uh, and to uh, start uh, work on the master uh, plan. But, um, and I'll let Carol get into it in detail, which would be uh, very helpful, but I do know that there is, uh, people are talking about it around town, uh, different commissions, different boards are talking about it. And uh, one thought was is, well, we should probably do the same and make sure that we, if there's anything that we want to uh, make sure that's uh, involved in it, then uh, then we make sure that that makes it into the record. So, Carol, right. but I'll let you give an update on the master plan, if you would, and, and the exercise. So, sure. Thank you. Uh, the master plan advisory committee has been at work on drafting goals and a vision statement for the plan. The consultant is preparing to uh, present the preliminary report, the baseline report, and we expect that next month, uh, end of October. It's not a requirement that boards have an objective to the master plan that's in addition to or different than or in support of what naturally comes out of the public engagement process and that naturally comes out of the master plan advisory committee's work. But at the same time, I think it's important to the process and to the committee, the Master Plan Advisory Committee, and to the public to hear whether, at this point, this early point, whether the Development Board or the Board of Selectmen or the Planning Committee, key boards who will be called upon to in, uh, implement the plan, and in the case of the Redevelopment Board, to approve the plan and actually make it policy, it's important to know at this early stage whether there is an official board position or objective for the master plan. It's not a requirement and it's not even, I would say, routine in any way. It's not called for in state law. But it was suggested by uh, a member, or excuse me, suggested uh, during a stakeholder interview, and I think it's an intelligent suggestion because of um, how I've seen some master plan processes um, derailed in some instances. If, if a member of a key board, if you get too far along the process and there hasn't been an opportunity for a, a member's concerns or objections to be heard, or objectives to be heard, it get, then gets hard to distinguish 
whether it's an individual's opinion or a board's position. So it's important for the substance of the plan to know this now. It's also important strategically. I will repeat, it's not obligatory. It's not a requirement. But I think it's a good exercise and it's good timing right now to ask the question and to get the board to deliberate and consider whether it has an objective to the plan beyond what would naturally arise. Great. Thank you. Um, I think one of the things where I was thinking is that we could kind of go around and, and talk about different concerns, objectives that each of us has uh, with respect to it. I'll give you my own, my own philosophy on this a little bit is I certainly want to make sure that the um, advisory committee is aware of the different members' um, concerns and objectives uh, for the master plan. I do think they're there to be advisory, though, and to hamstring them. My own view is is to hamstring them with actual kind of the redevelopment board thinks this. I'm certainly happy to discuss it. My own personal view is um, if, if the redevelop you know that the redevelopment board thinks this we start to kind of shackle them a little bit in their exercise. And uh, while I think it makes perfect sense for all of us to kind of talk about what we're looking for out of, uh, out of the master plan process, I guess I would, my, in my own mind, beware of turning that into more of a needs of the board in the master plan process, given the early, not early stages, but where they are in the process right now. So, so with that, that's my, that's my own belief. Let, um, I guess if we can go down the, 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 the down the road, go and go down the row if that's okay with folks. Sure. So uh, I just want to echo Mike, you know what Mike led off with, and that is that um, I'm sensitive that as the board is in fact the planning board for the town of Arlington and works closely with the planning department, who under which auspices the master plan is being shaped. Um, or commissioned, um, that you know that our suggestions don't come across too heavy-handed. Right. You know, I, I think it's really important for the advisory committee to, to receive input from a, from the community at large, and um, not have this feel like it's an inside job. Um, however, having said that, you know, I think that there are uh, some things that we can um, keep on the agenda for the advisory committee. Uh, that might be overlooked uh, in the process if we didn't raise it. Um, and substantively, I, there are two things that that um, occurred to me that I would like to stress as, as objectives, or at least should be very much in the discussion that the advisory committee is, is having. And, and the first is to uh, improve the vitality, variety, and appearance of Arlington's commercial areas. Um, I think as a redevelopment board, that's something that we're particularly sensitive to. Um, and uh, over the years, we've, we've uh, considered a lot of uh, ways of implementing that, that goal. Um, we've talked about form-based zoning as a, uh, a vehicle, uh, particularly in um, designated portions of the commercial areas that could uh, help bring some new building development into town. Um, I'm particularly encouraged by some of our more recent larger scale projects that have involved uh, a public amenity, whether it's at Sims with the public parks, uh, at the Altus site with the walkway that connects the bike path to uh, the other little pocket park near the high school. Um, and just to expand on that idea, uh, I was thinking that, you know, with respect to the larger uh, site development, that it provide a public amenity or it have a, a multi-use function. Um, or have an installation of public art or some combination of the three. So the future development, and, and I think it's, it will happen, but we want to shape it in a way that makes it uh, accessible and sort of friendly to the public, um, you know, takes place uh, along those lines. Um, I think we hear a lot about parking as a concern. And um, over the years, I think we've uh, considered the possibility of structured parking or building a deck in the Russell Commons parking lot. Um, so I think that should be part of the discussion too. Um, and then lastly, in, in, and this is sort of uh, maybe dreaming a little bit, but 
the feasibility of, of a red line extension into Arlington Center without sacrificing the bike path. Um, it's at least worthy of discussion. Um, the other major thrust that I had, and I'm really going to defer to my colleague Andy West on this, uh, but the development of the Millbrook Linear Park. Um, I think this is an opportunity for the town. Uh, we can um, complement the district's existing uh, attributes, its history, the past industrial use, uh, but also create opportunities for new businesses to locate there um, uh, with a mix that, you know, brings the public in and, and sort of invigorates uh, some vitality in it. So uh, I don't want to monopolize the time, so I'll defer to my other colleagues. Okay. So as the liaison to the Master Plan Advisory Board, I've been listening to all of their discussions most recently especially about developing the goals and they have a list of really good draft goals um, for each of the categories for land use for transportation cultural historic art, artistic resources these are the categories natural resources open space and recreation public facilities and public finances uh, economic development and housing so they've, they've been developing through a really comprehensive open process with the public. And I know we've been hearing about it, that there's been these open meetings with the public. And they've gotten, I think, very good participation. In each of these meetings, they, they divided their committee up into um, different groups to address these different categories, opened it up to the public, had very good response from the public, developed these goals based on what they heard from the public at those individual small meetings, but also at those larger meetings that we all attended at the Hardy School, mm -hmm. you know, the one that was in each area of Arlington, even from the uh, World Cafe, the results that came out of the World Cafe and all the visions and goals, objectives that were all kind of mixed together that came out of those sessions. So because they're doing such a very open process and there's so much participation, I really feel that we should let them continue to do the work that they're doing in developing these goals and objectives. So I didn't come up with individual mm -hmm. things. I think the things that Bruce picked up were mostly objectives rather than overarching goals, which is what they're developing right now. The next step, I think after we get all of the resources from the consultants, um, right now they're doing all the, um, the inventories and evaluations of all our different facilities and our resources what we have historically, what we have in land use, what we had in the past, what we have now. They're compiling all of that, as Carol mentioned. In, Oct in October, we're going to start to get all of those reports on each of these different categories. And it's, I think it's very hard to form very strong objectives until we have that information. And we can start to read through it and understand it fully and see what our exact situation is here in Arlington. There are some things that we've been talking about in the past, which Bruce touched on, the, the Millbrook certainly, um, making sure that those things are included, Millbrook open space. But I think as we go through this process, um, we're going to see what's missing, and we have to pay attention to that. So we could come up with a few things now, but I think we're going to be kind of redundant on what they're already coming mm -hmm. up with. Because they're coming up, like they've already touched on all the things you've said. Mm -hmm. You know, they have a they have a goal that, um, well, for for transportation, to maximize access to transit, bicycle, um, pedestrian access, to look at innovative modes of transportation, mm -hmm. which the red line, bringing the red line through, is a more defined mm -hmm. objective of that goal. So I can, you know, point out each goal that they've already come upon. It touches upon even the, the beautification of our public spaces, maintaining our streetscapes, improving them to revitalize our downtown. All of those are woven, I think, into all of these different goals. So right now they're doing a lot of wordsmithing to make sure that the goals read well, that they read well together because there were so many different voices right now that developed the goals because they did yeah, it through really this public process. Yeah. yeah, so yeah. some of them are short, succinct, Com or statements. Others are three three sentences that are all strung together. So Judy is really trying to, and you know, she's putting it up on a screen at the meetings, the actual word document, 
and editing it right there in front of the whole committee to try to make them all start to read the same. It's a very arduous process with the committee. Right. You know, how many do we have on the committee? Twelve? Mm -hmm. Eleven? It's a difficult process, and you get a lot of back and forth, and you start to really understand what they thought the public was getting at in the comments that they made, which is very interesting. The comment that they wrote down maybe didn't reflect that yet. But as the discussion goes back and forth to try to change the wording, you know, there's a lot of pulling, no, you can't change that word because this is what it means. And this is what we're going after, not that. So I think the process is really exciting what they're doing and the way they're coming up with things and what they're taking from the public and what they're saying, okay, we'll take part of this from the public, but we already know this which needs to balance that a little bit more. So I think as we go through the process, we're going to be able to interject things that we might know of that are missing. Like, I haven't seen the Millbrook at all. But we're on goals. We're talking about open spaces, connectivity, mm -hmm. stewardship, environmental responsible development, you know, sustainability. There's a lot of big words that we're trying to hoe down on and, and define what is sustainability as it comes to the environment, as it comes to fiscal management. Mm -hmm. So, you know, personally, I, I want to make sure that there are things in there um, that reflect Arlington's goals for the impacts of climate change, being prepared for climate change in the future, what are we as a community going to do for that, um, making sure that those are what, that whatever that uh, Whatever those objectives will be are woven into every single one of these goals because I think that's a very big overarching goal that we as a community have already and should continue and strengthen. So that's one of my goals is to make sure that I see that in each one of the overarching goals and then as we get to the objectives, helping to define what can you actually do to make sure that climate Within change is addressed. Yeah. yeah, anything we can do to reduce our carbon footprint to make you know, those impacts smaller here. Okay, that's enough. <laughs> so, Thank I think you. as the process goes on, I, I don't know if you agree, Carol, there's going to be a lot more opportunities as we read through all the information that's coming out to interject even more. The objectives will get more specific once the goals are finished. Once those are down, then we'll get to more concrete steps. And you haven't even seen the goals because right. they're still in such a draft state. I have a little bit of an advantage because I've been mm -hmm. yeah. seeing mm -hmm. as they evolve. And any of you guys are welcome to come to any of those meetings. I know people are meeting about with yeah, I know. other committees that are on and that work and everything else. But yeah, the meetings are getting interesting now. They haven't all been, but they have now been getting interesting. <laughs> <laughs> when is the like ours, which are always <laughs> interesting. I'll be honest. Yeah, yeah the ours are always interesting. <laughs> oh, yeah, ours is going to be really interesting yeah. after this meeting that it's Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. So, thanks, Christine. Okay. Andrew? Uh, <clears throat> I think both Bruce and Christine make some really excellent points. Uh, I really do agree with Bruce. One of the things that I'd like to see is, is uh, what he mentioned about the vitality of appearance of some of the commercial areas downtown and hand in hand with that what I'd also like to see is a really firm concrete business retention and expansion plan to use some existing commercial and retail space that's here in town and, and do it in a way that's sustainable and encourages growth in Arlington in a way that you know, the businesses that are coming in are going to stay here and are going to provide right. a benefit to the community. Um, speaking with some residents over the weekend the town day I found that there's a real interest in, in helping bring those kinds of businesses in town that'll, that'll stay here and not just be a, a two or three year flash in the pan um, or be sort of a fast moving retail kind of business. I'd like to see the town or the master plan reflect those ideas. That's great. Thank you. Andy, have at it. Mr. Millbrook. I'll try to, you know I'm all very interested in, in uh, Millbrook Linear Park and also in the Mill District. I kind of came about it through being uh, the liaison to the Open Space Committee and um, from the ARB. And then we had a subcommittee where we looked at the, and Christine, I think you were part of that whole thing, but we looked at the linear park. And then we kind of began to think in an expanded way. And this is something I've been 
bringing to the board on occasion. So what I'm suggesting is that the Millbrook Linear Park, which is an open space idea, and that the um, and then as well as the Mill District, which is really a holistic idea about uh, development and sustainability and mixed use, a development idea that those two things be recognized as we go into the in, into the uh, master plan. And um, it's it's I agree with what's been said already. I think one of the big things that keeps echoing in these in these um, workshops and also in the vision statement is how kind of lucky we are, what a great community we have. And the idea of community is so important to the future of the way our children are going to live. I know that as an architect and master planner, we talk a lot about this. We talk about how people have a desire to live close to facilities, close to cities, but also have a sense of parks, uh, have a sense of community via parks, good schools, neighbors, and so forth. Arlington has a nice, uh, a nice uh, positioning as, as really, and I don't like to use that smart growth word, but it really is because it places itself between the city and the suburbs in a nice way. Forgive me, I'm going to turn that off. Um, so the, the idea of the mill district as opposed to the linear park is it's a bigger idea. And I'll just quickly read the headlines of the report that mm -hmm. I brought out just to help kind of flesh it out and I won't be too long. It starts with the mill district with the bones. It's the area between the bike path, which is I think either the top or the up there as the most used public park in the state, if not a bigger area. In terms of use, number of people used per year. That runs through the north side of this, di this defined district. The south side of it is Mass Ave, which is a a dream commercial corridor in some ways, though we all see the ups and downs of it and the history of it with its gas stations and its this and that. But to have a, a commercial spine that intense and that well packed in is, is a dream for retail. It's a dream for commercial and so forth. So it's a real town center. It's a main street. So we've got a main street and we've got this recreational bike path. They both converge at Arlington Center and then they converge again at Arlington Heights. And it makes a kind of a shape like this, where you have Arlington Center on the, on the right in this case, and you have Arlington Heights on the other side. And it's bounded again by Mass Ave and by the bike path. Right down the middle of it is the Millbrook Linear Park. And they extend farther, the, the park extends farther and so forth. But there's quite a, an interesting opportunity for this potential heart. It actually is the heart. It's where all of the kind of the heavy industrial work that came about it, part of the history of Arlington was the mills. And it, it was where a stream was, where the hills of either the side came down, and that's where the water was. And the water flowed through, and that was used for commercial purposes, and, and basically the life of the town was there. Um, so. It's, it's quite natural that that became this heart of Arlington. It's where a lot of our commercial areas are right now. Uh, Dudley Street, for instance. So you also have, by the way, the Battle Road, which is the path of Paul Revere and so forth. And all the historical sites which come through in different areas of this same area. You have key sites, some of the last large sites in Arlington. For instance, Myrax site, um, Gold's Gym site, uh, Mill Brook, which I'll get to in a minute, which, uh, excuse me, uh, the, uh, what, what do we call our apartments at Chaddix? Uh, yeah, Alta. 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 Uh, that is actually an example of a large site that was developed in a mixed-use fashion. Um, and then you've got all the cross streets and neighborhoods coming through it. So, unbelievable bones, and it's the heart of our town. It's actually... It's kind of there, and we don't always recognize it. Um, 
So the opportunity is there for bringing together a lot of the things that we look at as valuable in our community, that we think are valuable, I believe, about Arlington, uh, and things that we can see going forward. We've talked about mixed use. Larger sites, uh, as they come available, could be designated for the possibility of not only industrial or commercial, but the blending in of, of uh, residential in a, in a, in a, a well-considered way. We've all talked about we want to preserve our commercial core and our industrial core. I completely agree with you, Andrew, that businesses that could latch on, that would find this kind of an area valuable, uh, that woodworking shop, which is an extension of the school down in, in Boston, is an interesting example. Um, secondly, so mixed use, secondly, open space. That's the Millbrook Linear Park. It's, it's, it's a kind of a dotted line, so sometimes you see a lot of it and sometimes it's, it's covered over like at the, it, it's not gonna be a, you know, a continuous idea. It's gonna be a series of pocket parks, but it can be very recognizable. Um, bike path improvements can go along with it. Mass Ave commercial revitalization can go along with this whole district, historical uh, tourism and sustainability. So if you think about those kinds of things, those, those basic opportunities, again, mixed use, residential, office, medical, professional, industrial, light manufacturing, arts and crafts industry, retail restaurants, health and wellness, education and cultural, there's all these things already in it. So how would we, how would we master plan that area to allow that to, to continue to happen? Um, open space. It's a different kind of a park, but Arlington has all different kinds of parks, and it's probably, I think, personally, it's the strongest thing that I, I like about Arlington is the, is the parks and the st beautiful streets and the trees. It's it, the uh, opportunity for this Millbrook district is to then mandate or allow improvements to that linear park, the brook, to happen as developments go through. So a develop, we might say, okay, you can... You can build this many units, and you can. We'd like you to incorporate uh, educational institution or commercial institution, but you have to upgrade your your part of the of the Mill Brook. Mm -hmm. Oh, great! That's just what I wanted. I, I have a little brook there, and I have. I'm going to place my uh, my restaurants along that edge, or whatever they do. So it, it won't be a hindrance. It will become an opportunity for these for these businesses. Um, the uh, the Mill Brook can be that focal point. So each development as it goes along can say, I've got an interpretation of Mill Brook. It, just as the mills did, they, they used it, okay? They used it for X, Y, Z. This is not to be a pure idea. This could be many interpretations as it is right now. Sometimes it's channelized. Sometimes it's in a beautiful little glen. Other times it runs under little bridges and so forth. So there can be lots of permutations. Quite an interesting idea. And it was brought out years ago. This was a, I think the master plan was done, Christine, but there was a graduate student who did it for the town. And was it the late 70s? I think so. I think so. It was a long time ago. And, and one important thing about it is a more relaxed open space alternative to the bike path. Mm -hmm. So you could meander yeah. from, you know, the, the high speed bike path. And, and the elderly don't want to go and be run over by either runners or bikers or something. It can be a little intimidating. So now you can enjoy the bike path, come in and off it, come off it and back on it, and have another public space area that you can enjoy so you don't feel, you know, I'm either here or there. I, I've got an alternative as an open space. Bike path improvements, we already saw that on the, on the Alta development. I think that's along with improving Mill Brook. You can contribute to the bike path. Um, Mass Ave commercial revitalization, don't need to say much more about that, except what's really cool is that these cross streets that keep going through, some of them have the green bridges, which are the old bridges of the... Right. So there's a real personality to this thing. So let's say you're on the bike path, and like you do at Lexington, well, i got to get to Lexington because I'm going to peel off and I'm going to go to a particular coffee shop. We want that to happen. We want you to peel off at Brattle Street, learn a little bit about the the you know, historical aspect and walk up Brattle Street, which is about less than a quarter of a mile to, to the Brattle Square, what's called Brattle Square, and that's where you buy your coffee and you have 
and, and then it's a, it's a bike path and then the settlement. But the Mill Brook is in between, so it, it kind of makes that transition. So the cross streets are, are a big deal, as well as the two centers, Arlington and Arlington Heights. Historical tourism, that's something that we all talk about as in something that we could capitalize better on. And why not do it as a part of an, a story about the Mill Brook, which is the history of Arlington, at least add on uh, to the, uh, the current kind of um, you know, Battle Road idea. And then sustainability, which is really walkable. I mean, one, one aspect of it is that people can live if there's older age communities or and younger and businesses. I think people like to be around everything. You know, they don't want to be off in an, uh, at least a lot of the thinking now is not to be in an, in a, in an old right. age community that's off somewhere else, but you can be in the action and mix with people that are young, old, whatever. So I think if, if we think about it that way, in, a, in that kind of sustainability, it can be, it can be pretty potent. So, um, you know, I think it has a strength in that it connects Ar Arlington Heights and the center. Um, I think that's kind of a way to get a, a more cohesive feeling to our whole Mass Ave corridor. Kind of realize you're going from one end to the other and you're seeing, you're seeing this ha kind of unfolding in between. Um, these are just kind of things we talked about going forward that was a little bit of ancient history. But lastly, kind of wanted to point, there's a little mission statement in here, but I think basically for tonight I'm saying it would be interesting if, it would be nice I think if we could recommend that the master plan recognize some of these ideas. Um, and I wrote down a great start because uh, the development of Alta really was a, a nice mill district development. It has medical office, which was all already there. It has Shaddix. It has new retail that we mandated or we were able to get as a board. It has 200 units. Maybe we, we would want less, whatever it is. But as an end, it has an improvement of a pocket park, which was done on the Lanier Brook Park way with funds from the development. And they improved the bike path. So it's kind of a little mini model for how you could do development in that district. But the more master planning uh, thoughtfulness about what we could get into that, the better opportunities maybe we could bring to the area, particularly those big sites, but really all the sites. Uh, but particularly the big sites, we, we, there's quite a bit of opportunity, more than there is anywhere else in Arlington, I think, except for the new site. Yeah. So, for those reasons, I think it's a very interesting place where all the DNA of Arlington kind of could be exhibited. The things we like about Arlington are there right in the middle and we can foster them. So I don't think it's a implanting a new idea in a way. It's almost just saying, let's look at what we like about Arlington and make sure that that happens in our heart, which is the potential mill district. I think because the Mill Brook is so compromised right now, too. It's a fabulous opportunity to improve the water quality, to improve the stability of the banks. Every, every project that goes in in any vicinity of the Mill Brook should be more environmentally responsible than, I, I you would, know, than less, right, certainly, it, but, but it would, should really be stressed. And I would, absolutely, and I would say that the Millbrook Linear Park is in itself a great idea and should always be part of our open space objective. But I'd like to add on to it. I suggest I would like to suggest that we add on to it some thinking about how by, how that zone, the Mill District that we defined, could be a a, a, a bigger idea in a way than just the park. really an opportunity to accomplish a lot of the goals that they're already setting right now. Right. Put them into action. Mm -hmm. And I think it, it's funny, as, as I listen, thanks, Andy, and as I listen to everybody, it's we're kind of chomping at the bit for the, for the master plan. And I think I think if there was an overarching um, kind of theme, as I'm, as I'm listening, it's that, um, especially since we see it up close and personal, 
uh, week in and week out. I think what you're hearing to some extent is as far as commercial vitality and, and certainly open space and the spine of the, of the town is I think sometimes, I don't want to speak for the committee, but myself, you feel like you don't have the right tools. Not that you don't have any tools, but in order to be able to do um, uh, the things, as you, as you mentioned, Andy, it's all there. It just needs like different things to be kind of pushed, pulled, you know, back, mm -hmm. forth. And I think one of the things that's exciting about the master plan for me, as we get through the goals and we move to objectives, is a lot of what we are talking about is probably more on the objective side, and to keep it, it, it possibly. But I think we're chomping at the bit for those tools to be able to accomplish those goals through objectives. But I, I don't know. I don't know what other folks feel like that. But, but I think that with respect to mixed use and with respect to certainly taking these bigger parcels and being able to be creative and, and encourage creativity. I, I think that's difficult for us sometimes is to encourage creativity uh, for the developers and the folks who, who own the parcels. It could be that once we get into the objectives, that just like I was thinking, climate change, the impacts of that should be woven into each one of these. The mill district concept should also be woven into each one of these categories through their objectives. I think that's a way to start to accomplish, what do you think, of making sure that it is what tools you there. need, what, yeah. tools, what tools both this board and the town the requires in order, hmm. you know, to be able to accomplish some of these things. Do we have the tools in place right now to be able to meet our goals? I'm guessing we're going to say, we're going to see that the advisory committee says, well, you, we, we need some help in that regard. So. Mm -hmm. I don't think the advisory committee knows anything about the mill district, because that, that hasn't come up yet, has it? It came up uh, at the Cambridge Savings Bank workshop. Um, I know I've heard it a uh, few times, but I don't know if if it necessarily understood to exactly. this um, scope and scale. So it might be worthwhile mm -hmm. for me to ask you if you'd come and yeah. just thinking the same Actually, thing to, yeah. to one of the meetings, sure, maybe even yeah. to the next meeting as they're writing goals, although the goals are really taking a, a while and need to get done on a schedule, right? It's just something they should. I think they should. Maybe consider. before the objectives. They may have a different take on how to do it. The next meeting um, is pretty focused on the um, continuing with the work from last week on the goals, but um, the October meeting mm -hmm. agenda isn't fixed, and that mm -hmm. might be a good opportunity if you're willing. We could bring it up yeah, at the I next meeting right. and ask the committee what they think. I don't. I want to say it's October 3rd. I'll get you the date to see if you're... Oh, that's right around the corner. That's yeah. next week. Right, that, which makes me wonder if that's... That's next Thursday. Correct, Thursdays. because to have three meetings, three weeks in a row. We do. We have we a do. lot. Okay. I think we have three in Do you have the correct date by any chance? I the don't feel sure that uh, I've got the date. I have the date. Yeah, of the October meeting. Yeah, I think so. While you're looking for that, um, it yes, was the one, third. It is okay. Mm -hmm. Seven p.m. I'm sure. Third. So, Andy, if you want to check your availability, I'll check with the um, co-chairs to see. I know I'm in New York the day, the day before on Wednesday the second, so I have okay. to make sure I can yep. be back. Right. I understand. I understand. If Andy know. can't, maybe between you and I, mm -hmm. we could try. We could make copies of this and make sure everybody has it. I've sent this as a PDF to you, mm -hmm. and I'll send it to everybody, but I'll refresh you. I have it. I have it, unless you've changed it. No, unfortunately. I, I still have it. I wanted to make a nice version of it with, could, yeah. with, the, um, with your GPS I'm guy. no Andy West. <laughs> <laughs> I know, it'll be hard for us to duplicate what he just said now. So, yeah. first choice is to try. We have the video, oh. we could just play it. No, I would, <laughs> yeah, I would, exactly. I would love to be there. Yeah. We could play it, I mean, that would be, no, I if, think if you can't do that. Person. It is, yeah. of course. That's first choice. <laughs> well, it, it's really great to uh, hear you run through this again, Andy, because um, I, I think it really is a great idea. The mm. more the more I think about it, the better it sounds to me. Um, so I think, you know, having you make that presentation would be great. 
Um, you know, one of the things that I think when I first began to think about it, you know, I'd say, well, okay, you got a, you know, the, the old Schwan mill here, and you've got the foot of the rocks over here as the battle site. Um, people really going to want it. I mean, is that, are those big enough attractions for people to make that connection? And I think that what happens is if you try, and, if you realize this, the park itself or the district itself becomes the attraction. Right. You don't have to hit all the right. points of interest in any one trip, but, you know, I mean, people go to the High Line in New York because of the High Line, not because of the, you know, buildings that are adjacent to it. So the linear park, on a more modest scale, would become like that too. And, and um, you know, and then if you mix in, you know, uh, you know, a cafe or you've got a nice walk along the, the, the brook brought back to life along mm -hmm. the lines of what so you're saying, Christine. Yeah, and, and maybe, you know, through some sort of constructive dialogue with the private property owner saying, you know, if you put up some sort of amenity or cafe space that's adjacent to the uh, town-owned property next door, you're going to really have some synergy there where people are going to want to come visit that place because they also can, you know, lounge out on the grass by the brook or something like that. And then all of a sudden you've got, you know, some, some chemistry happening there. So I, I'm really intrigued by that. And uh, I, I think you make the, the, the presentation really sing. So. You make it, re every time I hear you do it, I think this is the third time for me to, <laughs> but, which is good. I hear something different and I understand it that much deeper. It's a really, it's a very complex, but simple idea at the same time. There's so many facets to it. The, the danger is getting it too diverse. Mm -hmm. I'm just looking for right. specific ways. And it would be done in an incremental way, the same way the park is being done. But these little pocket parks, mm -hmm. little beautiful gems, mm. they're just fantastic. I used to take my kids to a little part around the rec, the one that's just before you get to the rec center. It's almost a pull off of the, of the uh, bike path. Mm -hmm. You can have a little picnic there and that kind of thing. So I think it can be quite powerful, even though it's quite modest. Yeah. And for all the development to start to take advantage of the Millbrook as an asset. Yeah, and it's they, a very they, strong They've done it. There. They've adapted to it in various different, really bizarre ways. It's kind of fun to walk along it. We did. We, we did with Annie LaRoya and the... Uh, oh, did you? Yeah, yeah. We walked the whole thing. And there's some really wild stuff going on. I mean, there's little diversions and channelizations and sometimes it's just beautiful and then it runs under a little neighborhood it's pretty amazing the smallest house in arlington is on the millbrook at brattle it's actually a house <laughs> it's as big as this table <laughs> and it's right next to the brook yeah. we should buy that house. treasure <laughs> that little house we should buy that and just have it as a little way station or something i mean just cool stuff could happen and people will get a say hey we should go there Let's go to the bike path, because then you go, I really want to go down whatever, Grove Street. It's really cool. You'll see where the brook comes out. And, you know, you hear it rushing through there if you go down to Grove Street. By the tennis courts, public park, right. mm -hmm. part of the linear park, potentially. Yeah. It goes all the way back into the woods, and there's a bridge that crosses over it, that kind of wood bridge. So if you go from Dudley Street, you can yep. cross through. There's a chain-link fence, but you can kind of work your way around. All those little moments can be a whole other dimension to the public space network that we have already have. But I do think it's important for the advisory committee to hear yeah. about it because in doing so then, as they're doing the goals, you won't see anything that says Mill Brook in it, but you would, what you will see is them taking it into account as, you know, as they're drafting that up. And then when you get to the objectives, you know, you can certainly get a lot more specific with it. And, but but it's good at this point in time to make sure that they've got that overlay. Even um, the consultant. The part of the phone. If Judy and her team hasn't considered it as they're starting to do the inventory. Yeah. Then. Well, I could go with, uh, if there was another, a date that worked, I could go also with uh, Ann Roy. Or Ann is on the master plan committee. She's on it. Okay, she's so on she, it. Uh, she's the so one. She, she can help yeah. foster that. Right. Yeah. It, does that committee still meet, the Millbrook? It's, it's just kind of 
you know, it had kind of stopped meeting right when I started to try to join it. <laughs> <laughs> I, I believe they I were connected. I, I, think yeah. I, I think I got an email on that. Actually. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just sanding the committee. Exactly. Oh, maybe, no, not Christine. <laughs> I wonder if it's... Uh, they kind of came to no, a, just, a roadblock. No, we just reached like. a point where we now need to start seeing real right. implementation. And I think that the planning department was beginning to look at it, but now they're, it could be rolled into the overall. That was the idea that yeah, it would be rolled into the master plan. Yeah. So, but again, I, I've had trouble because I try to tell people it's the Mill Brook, but then the, it's, it's not just a park, uh, not just the brook. Mm -hmm. And, the and it's not just that, the open space. It's that are around it. Could potentially be this really big idea about Mass Ave and like that, Summer Street in some right, cases. Right, the whole. Right. If you can get people walking through, remember what we did again at at, uh, at the apartments, you're forgetting the name, Alta. Mm -hmm. You loop around from the bike path down the steps, remember, mm -hmm. and through, and you end up at uh, near the high school, right at that pocket park on the brook, which is one of the nicest parts of that brook that runs along the side of 22 Mill Street yes. office building. Yeah. It would be great if there was a set of stairs up to CVS or up to one of those streets like that mm -hmm. dead end one mm -hmm. called Ryder Street or whatever it is. Yeah. That would be really cool. But you still hook around and you go back up Mill Street. Right. So people will, I guarantee you, they will take their baby carriage and they'll take a little walk around and they'll stop and they'll have a little bite to eat, whatever. They'll mm -hmm. use that park like that, because there's a connection from the bike path to Mass Ave, where they wouldn't if it was a dead end. Mm -hmm. So the connections through it are really key. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Christine, I have a question based on your role as the liaison to the uh, advisory committee. Um, you brought us up to date with sort of where they are and trying to work out you know, the language for the goals. Would our input be premature at this point? Or is it timely for us to chime in? I think it's timely, okay. as the goals are even be con being considered. They're more objectives, Ooh. I think, some of what we're talking about, mm -hmm. which is the next step. In the, and as they're writing the goals right now, there's a, there's a lot of objectives that come up and they get pushed back down because it's not time yet to get into the detail of objectives. So in that mm -hmm. respect, maybe we're just a little bit early. Just germane to the concept of connections. Um, that's something that the committee realized was a common asset in Arlington. Um, connectivity of uh, amenities throughout town, of our transportation modes, of our very packed, dense neighborhoods, of our commercial districts, um, our parks and our social connections in Arlington through recreation, you know, um, through the, the neighborhood schools. The fact that the Millbrook concept is all about connections, interconnectivity in Arlington, I think makes it quite relevant to, to the direction the plan is, is taking. Mm -hmm. But I, I do think it's not, it's not too early. Uh, um, to demonstrate that this is one really important and overarching uh, connection concept. I, I sometimes think of these three as a braid. They create a braid because they do cross in two places, two or three places. Uh, and boy, what an asset to have. Oh, it's fantastic. And the whole vision statement is about connectivity because that was the common thread that everybody saw. Given that, I mean, I think that it does make it, Andy, if you can, if you can make it there to kind of yeah, present yeah. that, it'd be great. Hopefully that works out. I'm not sure otherwise, other than, you know, commercial, um, uh, improved vitality, accessibility, and appearance of the commercial, you know, the, that, that kind of vitality of the spine that we've mm -hmm. been talking about for a while. And I think that's uh, very high on the, the minds of the advisory committee uh, folks as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think if, if we want to stress to them that <laughs> keep at it, you know, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that that's that's obviously a focus for, for this board. Uh, um, I wonder whether that isn't enough for you to be able to kind of go back with those those few things to them versus maybe, I, I think what some boards might be doing is a more formal, you know, mm -hmm. um, 
recommendations, etc. I'm, I don't think I'm there on the formality of that at the goal stage. I mean, certainly as we work our way through and we see the goals, if there are tweaks that we don't, you know, expect right. to make or whatever else, we certainly should, you know, have our uh, opinions be known. I just whether, I think, I think from a formality. Yeah, absolutely. Mostly missing. if we see, you know, the tweaks. Yeah, yeah, it is. What the it wordsmithing is exactly. something that. Exactly. Fair enough. <laughs> yeah. We don't let want them, to get into. Them, no, you're right. Yeah, you're but, right. But you're everything right. that we have said here today, right. other than the mill district concept, is is in here, and they've been discussing it and talking okay. about it. Don't you think we haven't said anything new? Not in regard to commercial districts there and, and parking. That's revitalizing it, making sure right. that vitality sustainability. remains. Sustainability. Sustainability of businesses as well. Making sure there's so, parking yeah. that supports that sustainability and that, right. that exactly. vibrancy and that, that we're looking well, for. So, yeah. mm -hmm. Making sure there's mixed use, that there's form-based zoning. All of those things, I think, are part of what's being discussed already. Mm -hmm. For the notes, yeah. um, if I could review Bruce, um, you said to improve the vitality, variety, and... Appearance. Appearance. Thank you. And appearance. And then Andy, if I may, um, saying uh, recognize. Well, to you mentioned three things, and then you said those are two important things. So I want I want to be yeah. sure I'm not. Two important things is the Millbrook Linear Park as a contribution to our open space, and the Mill District as an opportunity mm -hmm. for mixed use, for for a community heart to really to be the bigger picture. But the Mill District as a third element is really a bigger idea about connecting bike path, a new linear park, mm -hmm. and Mass Ave, and helping the, you know, the three of them be better utilized by the community. Good. Okay. Thank you. So it sounds like the board is um, satisfied if there is an opportunity for Andy to communicate great. this directly to the Master Plan Advisory Committee. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, mean, I hope that, that works out. Yeah. Uh, it, it's coming out of the open space group as well, so mm -hmm. it's not. Oh, no, but I think you presented As I started well. to say, too, that Cambridge Savings Banks, a few people um, at, who participated in that workshop mentioned it. Um, and at one other, I'm not sure if I recall whether it was the Hardy School. Or I mentioned it at Hardy School, but okay. so it got on one of the papers. But whether People that whether this it. vision is understood, I doubt. So I think it would be quite worthwhile for you to be able to communicate it as well. Yeah, yeah. not the depth of it. Right. It's not understood. No. Okay. And understands it, I'm sure, but other than her. Okay. I did provide to the consultant the um, report that the Open Space Committee prepared. Okay. Yeah. Good, good. But the committee itself would benefit from hearing this. Can we uh, just confirm this at the third? I'll make sure I can. It is the third. It is and you'll check your schedule. I will make okay. sure I can actually do it and if in their if body. That can't happen. Maybe we, we can work together to see yeah. when it's opportune for you and um, as many members as possible who I would think they'd um, be open to having a meeting just for this. Great. Okay, good. Great. Thank you. Thank you all. I wanted to ask Andy too, had, had that committee ever gone around to other committees like the tourism committee? Tourism didn't to, exist at the time. Oh, it didn't Not exist. Not really. Because that would be important to start to get all the different committees in town, tourism being one of the prime ones, mm -hmm. to understand that concept also. I know that um, our historian, um, Richard Tucker. Yeah, Richard Tucker. The old mill district mm -hmm. and how it worked. It's a 60 foot drop from the top to the bottom mm -hmm. and uh, from the reservoir. So it connects the reservoir, which is in Arlington. Right? Mm -hmm. And that itself is a, you guys have all been up there. It's a beautiful area to walk. So if you can highlight that too, that's part of it. Yeah, it goes it's through Cook's Hollow, mm -hmm. which we all know. Yeah, right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> which could have been even better. Yeah, it may still be one day. One day. It's, it's actually something I think that, I mean, I shouldn't say this and jinx it, but it's easy to get behind because it's, it is part of Arlington. It's not like you're bringing out something that's radically new about the town. Mm -hmm. right. It's right there. Yeah. It's just 
it's in a way it's preserving it's a conservative term it's, it's right there but it's fragmented yeah, yeah, yeah completely it's just peeling and it can be lost paper. completely because it's so fragmented and and underutilized and invisible in in most areas it surfaces you know at Cliffs Hollow it surfaces you know in a few pocket parks already a few of the redevelopments but it's still so fragmented mm -hmm. Well, thank you. Now, on to the next agenda item, which is a lot of fun. Uh, several minutes. And we've probably got a stack close to this, possibly for the next meeting. There are oh, five additional sets from five this additional year sets. and four from 2012. Okay, so we've got nine more, nine of Yeah. Oh, you're getting water? I'm going to get water. Yeah. The redevelopment board views more than the or let me rephrase it. The last the two um, year period. We didn't go into recess, so you can keep it on. I think, yeah. so. We're still free. meeting. Yep. Um, the redevelopment board met a lot. Can we just leave it at that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> more than it certainly um, did. More than most committees. It certainly has. Yes, yeah, so we're we're so we'll, we're certainly just gonna Plow through and away. Yeah. catch up. Yeah. Between this meeting, next meeting, and maybe one after. We'll have to see. Well, thank you, Carol, for throwing yeah, these thank all you very together. Much. I mean, this is when I saw them all. And, I was uh, quite the, surprised myself. You outdid yourself. <laughs> well, I, I, I didn't realize that we were yeah. missing minutes from last year. Oh, yeah. Okay. Quite surprised. So I apologize that I put the board in this position. Okay, so let's go through the minutes. The first one, you might have it in a different place. So it's very short, and it says on the top, April 23rd, 2013. So we're not That should actually be April, date. no, we are. That should actually be April 23rd, 2012. Okay. Okay. So that's my, that's, that's my first, uh, so on this one, yeah, it took me, it took me a little bit on this, but um, that should be April 23rd, 2012. Uh, Bruce is actually the chairman, so you can take the chair out of, after my name. Um, oh. And then, Mr. West actually, um, I can't believe I had this, but uh, moved to adjourn at 7.55 because that was the first night of town meeting for 2012. You are detail-oriented. Yeah. So he is. Are we sure yes. these aren't 2012? I'm positive. I wonder how I would have such a Well, actually, the, well, the title of it, the, title, the, actual, the actual file name says April 23rd, 2012. Okay. And if you look on the, um, if you look at the dates, because I was scratching my head saying that sounds like the first day of, of town meeting, I went back and looked at the warrant, and it was indeed the first day of the town meeting. Were we under construction on Sims April 2012 to hear yeah. the blast horn? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We were. Okay. Yeah. They were blasting amazing. at that point. In, the, in okay. fact, that's exactly what they were so doing. So that's another so maybe indicator. Yeah, it wasn't 2000 because that would have only been four months ago. It wouldn't have been 2013. Yeah. Right. That should change to 755? That should be 755 because we, we will have left before town meeting. Okay. And that's why we, it, because that's the first night, so we were on. Mm -hmm. I believe we got our teeth handed to us <laughs> only, <laughs> only a while later. <laughs> Good times. Good times. <laughs> <laughs> for the second year in a row. That was for the audience. <laughs> so yeah, I think I think we still have the cruises to show. Um, okay. That's what I had on this one. Did anyone have anything else? Um, I had a few things. Yeah, go. Sorry. go ahead if you want. I'll, I'll be last. Okay, I just had a few things. Um, the second sentence, that the blast horn four cannot be heard. I think the four could go out of there. Blast horn. Cannot be heard. Yeah, good. And I was thinking the paragraph that starts with Jake Upton or the sentence should stay underneath when we were talking about Sims. Yeah, kind of switch the board then. Discuss. Yeah, and the board then discuss could come underneath that. 
We just switch those two lines. It probably didn't happen in that order. Maybe we bounced back and forth, but it seems it would be easier to read it in yeah. the future if they were together. That's all. Oh, and documents used. Did we use any documents here? Like the town meeting Warren articles, maybe? I guess we would have used the Warren articles. Yeah. I guess, but I'm not sure you have to. We were just discussing the. Uh, but, yeah, we were sure. discussing I'm not sure we have to attach the. I mean, the Warren is the Warren. It's the public document. Yeah. You don't have to attach them, but we need to just state what documents state were used, right? Yeah. Or do you have to attach the documents also when you do that? Well, it would be our own board presentation. I mean, it was actually our report that we would have been looking at at the time. Right. So um, I guess you could just say that, you know, document used was the redevelopment board of, board report of 2012. Board report to town meeting. Andrew's going to be mainly all set. For I think I'll be all set. Yeah. 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 yeah, I think you have one, and it's going to be the last one, yeah. so forgive us for going in this order. No, I, I think <laughs> I'm all set, too. <laughs> it's a nice I, I have a question, though. I, when I marked this up, I said in the second sentence, the blast horn to warn of demolition cannot be heard. Is that... Yeah. I mean, does, do people understand what the blast horn re refers to? Yeah, I think that's fine. Okay. We do, but other people probably don't. Okay. So just to warn of demolition would follow blast horn. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Everything else you folks have covered. You okay with that, Carol? Yes. So I'll move to approve as amended. Second. Second. All approved? Aye. 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 Okay. Now we're going to move to uh, June. Was that all five of you? Four. Four. Okay. Four, because be he's going to be abstaining okay. from be everyone on other okay. than the last um, ones. So I think he'll just be yeah. uh, okay. abstaining. I was writing, I think, when you had that discussion just now, so I apologize. Yeah, no, no, no problem. No, but we didn't talk about the formality of it, so oh, that, that okay. makes sense, I think. Did anybody tell you a good job on all these meeting minutes? <laughs> yeah, no, <laughs> we should there. say that. Yeah, yeah, no, I think, we, I think, I think we did, but let's say it again. Oh, uh, thank gosh. you. Um, okay, so now we're on to June thirteenth, two thousand twelve. Um, I think just for clarity, let's go around the table. Bruce. Okay, sure. Um, in the uh, third paragraph that begins, Mr. Fitzsimmons stated that steps the board would schedule time. That sentence. I think it reads better if we just got rid of the word steps. So, okay, I'm sorry, I was still writing on the oh. previous set. Can you tell okay. me again what paragraph? Third I'm paragraph. Sorry. Okay. First sentence. Oh, yes. Uh, the word steps that appears in that first line. Mm -hmm. If we strike that, the rest of the sentence reads mm -hmm. fine and okay. makes more sense. And then in the sixth paragraph, which begins the executive session having ended. Uh, towards the end of that line, uh, we can strike the word the before appears before Mr. Care. Thank you. And then at the very end, uh, turn the period into a paragraph and add with Mr. West acting as chairman pro tempore. So just at the end of that sentence. Yeah. This, uh, Mr. Fields resumed open session of the meeting with Mr. West. West acting as chairman pro tem. Acting as chairman pro tem. Uh, two paragraphs later, that begins Mr. Fields moved to accept the letter from the town engineer. And the second sentence, uh, the, I think the word should be find, not fund, that the board find that the special condition test, et cetera, has been met. And that's all I had. So on the third paragraph, this is maybe a question. Third paragraph, sentence, sentence. Um, after the shelter groups,
capital and equity and financing? Yeah, is you can is it capital and equity financing? I think so. Maybe yeah. there's no and in between equity a, and financing? I think that's I think right. right. Capital okay. and so equity So that's one, one more word to get out, that and. Did you catch where that was? Kevin? Right before Capital, the comma, equity? Is that what you just said? Capital so and capital equity and. financing. Okay. No and between the equity no and, and the and financing. And. Okay. And then documents used. Did we use the agreement regarding the deed restrictions in LDA dated June 12, 2012? We, we kind of referenced that in here. So documents used and just cut and paste from the third paragraph, the agreement regarding deed restrictions and land disposition. I was going to change it into uh, in the care versus Mr. Care, but that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, I decided to go with myself as a third person. For sure. uh, okay, next is, okay, I'm sorry, uh, motion. I'll okay. move to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, June 13th. Number of votes. I go to June 25th, 2012. Bruce, I'm sure you probably caught the ones I've got, so I'll let you go. Okay, so um, the first is really a more stylistic comment than anything, but um, in the third paragraph that begins Sims Environmental Design Review, um, what I would suggest doing is, and instead of having David Holland, comma, the shelter group, say David Holland of the shelter group, Budge Upton of Upton Partners, Eric Anderson of Procon Architects, and Kataya mm. Pisadlo of Blair Hines Associates mm -hmm. presented the updates. And then before you get to the the, the details of that presentation, maybe do their pre presentation touched on the following points, and then you could bullet point the various things that are that are li listed there. Uh, and so again, it's not really substantive; it's just a little easier to to read. Um, after those five items, the next paragraph that starts, Mr. Kerr noted that the rendered plan. Uh, there's a extraneous comma after Mr. Care, or after the word Mr. Mm -hmm. um, and then I would, I, I think that there's the word as, which when you, know, you meant has. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, in the following paragraph. I, I think just to, the only other thing I had on that was where it says Mr. Anderson said that they, I think, could address that and other, because I think it just needed a, a thing in there. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I just read yeah, while we were on Yeah, that no, looks good. And then in the next uh, sentence that begins, horizontal will be added, I, I would flush the, line, the, the sentence out. My suggestion would be to say something like, it was agreed that a horizontal design element will be added at the stone water table line to help mitigate the height or the visual impact of the height of the building. Yeah, that's good. I had that one too. To mitigate the height of? the, I guess the visual impact of the height of the building. Of the stone wall. Of the stone wall. What's the stone wall? It wasn't a stone table? wall, it was um, the foundation, wasn't it? The stone base of the building. Oh. Right, of the assisted living facility yeah. building. Yeah, because yeah, we decided that we wanted to make so it hot, yeah. read a little more horizontally than, than vertically. Why is it right? being called the stone water table? It's just a stone band. A stone band. Stone band and a stone base. 
I don't know if it's at the water table or not. I think it's in addition to the water table band. The water table is the bottom band. Okay. So this is just should say horizontal stone band will be added on the stone wall to mitigate its its apparent height. Okay. Um, the stone foundation wall, you could say. A okay. Horizontal, so a horizontal stone band. Is that a horizontal? A horizontal stone band will be added to the stone wall to mitigate its apparent height. Or to reduce its apparent height, I guess. So something like that is okay? That sounds fine with me. I think we got some things thrown in there, like okay. water table that in addition. You can say add it to the stone foundation wall. You can say that. Okay. This is the next one's a famous one. Well, that I'm focused. I'm focused. He'll never listen. Exactly. I wasn't at I, this meeting. You guys did well on that honey locust. I, I went at it. <laughs> Once I figured Jim out Carol. what the heck it was, Mike was sure a fan possessed. Yeah, <laughs> once I figured out which tree this was. <laughs> they don't inspire thing. fans in that community. No, no, and we, and we lost. Yeah, we lost. that's why we ended up with. Some of the cultivars are nicer, so. Well, I'll need to see it. Um, there's, in where it says riprap, that should say on the riprap. On the riprap slope? Yeah. Okay, I see. And then I guess my last comment was on uh, the vote, um, and it reads, Mr. Fields moved to approve the 50% drawing subject to the condition uh, that an alternative to the honey locust be provided. Uh, that the number of battens in the pattern be increased and an extra horizontal band and the st be added to the stone base. So it's just a little bit of switching of the of the um, syntax of the verbs there just to get a little bit of flow. But substantively that's fine. That's, that's you may it. want to note the documents used again. Fifty mm percent -hmm. assisted yeah. living plans I'm assuming were used. The interim declaration of Conservation restrictions was used. There must have been a list of street I names know. that were used. Um. There was a letter up on the third paragraph. You guys were referring to the shelter group or um, letter RE interim declaration of conservation restrictions. So there must have been a letter. Letter regarding interim there, were, there were no, there was nothing in the notes about. Documents, yeah, I don't, so I don't think it was. I don't think we got a letter. I think, I think that was just. I mean, do you have to know what they presented with? They presented the fifty percent plan. Yeah, well, I think the fifty. I that. think we should say the fifty percent assisted living plans, like okay. that. I, I think. Maybe the rest. I think everything is, is just kind of incorporated within that. Um, oh, the only other thing I had is I think I there's an extraneous chair after my name as well. Okay. Yeah. My takeover hadn't started. Well, <laughs> although I was thinking about it way back then. Plot. Yeah. <laughs> subtly. Subtly, yes. Yeah. Subtly. Exactly. It's more subliminal than anything else. That's why Carol added on there. I'm going to be plotting how not to do Yeah, exactly. Share, so Trust me, if there was anything happening, that was it. Uh, I've tried to give it back several times already. <laughs> I've definitely tried to give it back several times already. <laughs> she said no backsies. No takers. <laughs> so I can't do it on this. Carol, I definitely will give you a minute, but I just want to see anyone have anything else on those, or are we good?
That's good. Okay, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll move to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that was two abstentions on that, Christine as well, because she wasn't there. Okay, so Mike was amended. Thank you, Carol. Carol, I just had a thought on why that was later on the on that very first set of minutes. I wonder if it's because we kept the meeting open on the over there. Maybe that's what you're doing. So well, I could see that happening. Um, but we would have gone later than the time that was on the draft. Yeah, on the thing, especially given that night. <laughs> yeah. Strange. All right, you might be right. Um, Next, I go to July 23rd, 2012. Um, before we get into it, I just have a, a couple small things and then um, I'll let them have at it. Uh, oh, did I skip July 8th? This is 2012. Oh. So this yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah, this is, this okay. is rather long. You just said July 23rd, right? July 23rd, 2012. Yeah. Okay. Okay, um, my couple small changes. Um, first off, Fitzsimmons just has another M. Um, in the first paragraph, the identical five down just has an extra I in it. I'm sorry, can you? Uh, I'm sorry. I was doing that same thing with that other set. So. Apologize. Um, so just Fitzsimmons, uh, just add an M to the top. Thank you. On the roll. Um, in the di first discussion box, mm -hmm. Five lines down, uh, identical, just has an extra I. Not a big deal, obviously. Uh, uh, three words from the right. It says Thank identical. You. Now, and then the only thing I had as well is that the attachment, Carol, has some red lines on it. You just need to accept the red lines. Oh, okay. Um, on the July 23rds. They're just still showing as red lines. Okay. Uh, if you don't have it, I've got it. You mean the... The, uh, on the minutes? memo. Oh, no, I'm sorry, on the special permit. permit. No, the, yeah. Yeah. Um, so uh, the not EDR. that it's not it's the EDR review, okay. not the special permit, sorry. So it's the EDR review for the lower park at Sims. Um, okay. it just has red line on it that just needs to be it just needs to be accepted. I mean, it looks fine. It just I would rather you know, we should just not have the red line up on okay. as the official record. And now for more substantive things, Ruth. Well, um, I'm just going to ask my colleagues if I'm remembering this correctly. Um, so, the LLC that owns the land for the assisted living facility is Shelter Development LLC, of which Shelter Group is the managing member. Does that sound right? Or I think that does sound right. Is that what it's yeah, because I, I think that I asked the question to Mr. Holland, you know, what the relationship was between shelter group and shelter development. And I think that's right. So, um, and Carol, you may be able to check on this, but I, I think it's, it, it, my reason for saying I think I've got it right is later on in the second, I guess it's the third box where it says document used exhibit F, it identifies shelter development LLC. So I think that's the redeveloper. So back to the second box about the, what's that, the fourth sentence that he that reads. He then explained that shelter development will be, and I said, and strike managing member at that point and say, uh, and, and the word be, and say, will own land and improvements, semicolon, Shelter Group is the managing member of Shelter Development. Okay, so it says, he then explained that Shelter Development will own land and improvements, so take out will be managing member. Yeah. So take that out. And then, um, keep the, uh, I guess I had a semicolon and I said, Shelter Group is the managing member of Shelter Development. 
Yeah, okay. So, uh, so get, get rid, of, rid of identical, get rid of identical to shelter group and yeah. say uh, semicolon shelter group is the managing okay. member of shelter development. Of shelter development. LLC. Or of shelter development. You don't need the LLC. And then the next line. Carol, if you're ready. Uh -huh. The equity investment in the entity is provided by shelter developments, high net worth individual investors. Okay. Do we, okay. The uh, investment. The equity investment in the entity. In the entity. Is provided by shelter developments. High net worth individual investors. Shelter development of possessive. Yeah. yeah. Okay. The equity investment yep. in the, the entity, entity is provided by. Is. And then get rid of is? Yeah. Shelter developments, high net worth individual investors. Right. Okay. And then the last sentence in that box is each Brightview project has its own ownership entity. <coughs> okay, over on page two. Um, there's a full paragraph there that begins with Katya Patsiadlo. Um, in A, it reads front entry canopy expansion. I, I think you want to say means mm -hmm. Las Finca. Right. Ms. Sapinski asked which trees would be used, etc. Um, there's <coughs> about uh, two lines later after that paragraph ends, and we're back to talking about Ms. Pazziadlo and then Ms. Sapinski again. I would take that line that reads, Ms. Sapinski asked them to use a cultivar, not the straight species, and move that up to the previous paragraph. So it all kind of, you know, fits together. Okay. I was going to suggest a bit of a rewrite of that item C. Mm -hmm. It wasn't clear to me what you were saying when you said compromise on six little leaf linen where larger trees can be done on retaining wall. I was thinking maybe you could scratch that first sentence and just say they uh, they kept honey locust street trees above the retaining wall due to the narrow five foot wide plant bed adjacent to the five foot wide sidewalk. They okay. did have a mix, though. Yeah, did they, they did. have a mix of the two? They did. Yeah. That's why. Yeah, we got we got rid of some. We just didn't get rid of all. Oh. Yeah. Right. It so a, the, the compromise. It wasn't my complete failure. I see. I see. I didn't quite remember that. Partial. Okay. Yeah. So maybe. Oh, so then maybe that makes sense. Okay. Yeah, it did. Right That's why it didn't make sense to me. Okay. Because I didn't remember that. That five foot plant bed and five foot sidewalk that's just hanging out down there. Well, I think we were talking about bringing that whole thing up to add to the end of the paragraph. I guess even then it might be hanging out there. Yeah, it's still kind of hanging out. The plant. We could just strike that five foot plant bed. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and then if you add that last sentence to the end of the other paragraph, mm -hmm. that would be fine. Okay. okay. Anything else, please? Um, H. Mr. Fitzsimmons commented that the large porch area, I think we need the word include um, before we just leap into perennials. Okay. On uh, page three, um, when we're talking about the height of the temporary sign um, and how many feet above off the ground it needs to be, 
And I think that the first reference was no more than 10 feet at its highest point, and then on the fourth line, no more than six feet off the ground at its lowest point. Does that sound like what we're talking about? That's right. Is this Mill Street? Uh, no, we're still on the, the temporary sign at, uh, oh, maybe it is Mill Street, you're right. Where it's in the vote box? Yes. No. No, this is. This it is, is in the vote box, actually. Yes. No, this is the this is the temporary sign for the uh, marketing. For the marketing trailer. Oh, on page two. Page, it's a carryover between two and three. I think. I think you're. Yes. Yeah. You're, yeah. You're. You're right. This is at at uh, the temporary sign at Sims. Correct. At the at the uh, assisted at living the, marketing. Yeah. So the edit is. So it, on the carryover on page three. Uh -huh. Where it says sign no more than six feet off the ground, and I think what you said was at its lowest point. Is that what you wanted to add? Right, and the earlier reference to being no more than ten feet. Okay, sorry. Is at its highest point. Okay, sorry. So we missed that one. But so at its lowest point after six feet, height to be no more than ten feet at its highest point. Right. I'm all set. So continue where Bruce just left off, the bottom of page two. So we have the vote. Mr. Fields moved to approve on the sign. Ms. Sapinski seconded, all voted in favor. Then there's this list of items. Are those all items that we said the approval is subject to? Yeah. So should we state that? Yeah. Um, was it part of the move approval? It was, right? All it of was. Three conditions. Okay. Um, so maybe we just need to say, Mr. Sapinski seconded, all voted in. That should come at the end then, right? Maybe well, that sentence that's needs a to good move. question. Because it looks like there's two movements here or something. Um, I think the Ms. Sapinski seconded and all voted in favor should be at the end of that whole box. Well, maybe you seconded and we page. had discussion ensue. Yeah, you know, I think it's... Is that what happened? I, I actually don't think the verify the detectable warning was in the vote. I, I write it in the order in which it is spoken. Yeah. Yeah, so I think this is... I think, I think what you've got after that... These were all things that they were supposed to do, though, right? Well... I think we were still. Yeah. You don't think we yeah, made it subject to all those things? Wait. I think I know what the issue is. Yeah, you know what it is? It's not. There's two votes here. I think you're right. So there's the second vote is actually the uh, approval of the 100%. Oh, so somebody moved to approve, right? That's what I wrote here. Somebody moved to yeah. approve the 100% assisted living design, yeah. subject to. Subject to. So there's two votes. The first one is on the sign. Mr. Field then moved to approve the temporary sign with the following provisions. Height to be no more than 10 feet uh, at its highest point, uh, location to be approved. Um, and, and actually, the sign no more than six feet off the ground at its lowest point should be moved back to that vote in front of um, Ms. Uh, Sapinski second and all voted in favor. So that was one little, so the sign no more than six feet off the ground at its lowest point, Carol, mm -hmm. should just be moved to before Ms. Sapinski seconded and all voted in favor. And then I think you could say, you know, Mr. Fields, yeah, I think it's, I think it was all one vote is what happened. Mm -hmm. I think we voted for the sign and the 100% review all at the same time. So I think the Ms. Savinsky second and all voted in favor should actually go at the end of this whole box. That's what I was thinking originally. Maybe yeah. that just got out of the order. Maybe I think order. that's the only one that got out of order. So I'm, I'm going to go back on my word now and say Ms. Savinsky second and voted all in favor should go at the end of that box. So leave sign no more than six feet off the ground where it is? You yeah. can. You can. I mean, 
That sounds good. Um, we should we should clarify that though that the movement included approval. Well, 100%. right, and I think I think the other thing is is Mr. Fields then moved to approve the temporary sign with the following provisions. I believe, um, and I think before add flowering native plant material. I think before that. Um, and approval of the 100% design with the following conditions. Add flowering native plant material, add edge of butterfly bush, joe pie weed, milkweed, but a tree line on the road. But ver verified detectable warning panel it's the same. is also I mean, part of that. You think that's on that one? Yeah, that would be on that one. Okay, so that's a little bit out of place. And I remember one more thing being part of this, and this has come back up again too. So I specifically remember it. Um, uh, revising, so we were going to have approval of a revised riffraff slope line planting detail. Okay. Re approval. That that was in this. But it can block. be added to this list. That would yeah. be part a of a revised percent conditioned on. How, how would you like that worded? A revised, um, added at the end? Yeah, that's fine. A revised detail of the vine planting within the riffraff slope. I wanted to add that. Well, I'll, we'll finish this first. Oh, I think I'm not I wanted to add that also under the um, the A through H items. Let's see where. Oh. Copy. Under F. This. Under F. Under F, we have page two. Yeah, part of it. We have added a third variety of vine, trumpet vine. Um, see no page three. On riffraff slope. Okay. And right there, we could say revise the vine planting also. I have to take up drinking. <laughs> <laughs> you might join it. <laughs> you'll, you'll all have earned it. <laughs> Back on the first page, the last box. Item B. You have B and then B again. Yeah. Right. Uh, the out, yeah, I'll get rid of that. The outline. But then it also has that new horizontal element at water table. Widen front entry and covered area for rocking chairs. Should each of those be their own thing? Yeah. Th these are all different details that were described. So A was more battens. B, new horizontal element at water table or wall. Or this should be commas or something in yeah, between. Yeah, commas or Yeah, because it's a little hard to follow. Maybe there could be a comma after mm -hmm. table then. Sure. Mm -hmm. Wide front entry, a comma there. And covered area for rocking chairs. So that was just a little hard to read. I think the, the covered area is part of the... Is part of the... Front entry. Wide right. front entry and covered area. Oh, okay. Okay. So that one doesn't need one. Okay, then on the third page, the fourth box, Mr. Fields moved to approve EDR standards proposed. Should we add for the Lower Vista Park and as amended by the board? Just to be clear on what we're approving. Okay, on documents used, we're just listing layout plan for Blair Hines. Did that layout plan include all their landscape plans, their lighting plans, their details? And we're calling it just layout know. plan? It's hard when people bring the plans in to incorporate it during the minutes because we don't, I don't know. I think we should say 100% plan set. Um, and that would include all the plans, all the details. Under documents or hundred percent set of drawings. Oh, yeah. oh, going back to the um, 
100% insert a document used? Under documents used, item four, we just list lay layout plan. Well, I think is it the progress print from Procon? Is that the? I think that's. Well, we approved a hundred percent plan. But so isn't that we, the hundred percent plan, the progress print? Uh, well, Blair Hines so was a landscape four? architect. Oh. Sorry, Procon. Yeah, yeah the very Procon. last page progress print Procon. Where we're listing documents. Twelve. I think that's the hundred percent plan. Yeah, but Christine's talking about four. Right. So you're saying the hundred percent landscape plan? There were 100% plans, and they included a right. layout plan by Belair Hines, a landscape plan, a lighting plan, lighting details. Okay. Uh, right well, I, say, wall details, I, I think I would details. say 100% and layout plan, Blair Hines. I believe they were all dated the July 23rd date. What? Not the July 18th. Of them. Procon? Okay. Yeah, I, I thought Pro Procon gave all the architecture. All the architecture details was right. under and less site layout. All the site stuff was under Blair Hines, and that included a layout plan. The civil was. So so why don't I think the easier fix is just in four. Why don't you just say one hundred percent, site and layout plan Blair Hines Associates, and I think that's going to get site and layout viewer. plans. Yeah. Yeah. Plans. Okay. Plans and details. Plans. <laughs> But there were tons of details. That's fine. They're, 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 it's, it's there. There, there, It's a package. Usually, I just put whatever the title like is on the top sheet, <laughs> because that's what you would look for if you were trying to get yeah. it to someone who wanted to see it. Yeah, and the, and oh, the problem really? is if you say if you say oh. too much. Because that's the purpose yeah. of the document. If you say too much, if then someone it, wants to see what was yeah. used. We need a reference you, for you, what do we grab? Where it do has to be whatever it says on the document. Just on the first page of the document. Yeah. yeah. So because otherwise, how do we know? Document. Oh, okay. The layout have, plan is fine. You might have a set of plans, and each sheet has a different title. Yeah. yeah. So they wouldn't go looking for that many documents. They'd look for one document that has a set with the cover. So doesn't the cover usually have a, a title that these are 100% plans? You'd plan? like it to, but sure. <laughs> yeah, I don't, actually, I've never seen anything say 100%. So if I, if I come to these meeting minutes and I'm looking for the landscape plan, I won't know that they're in here, though. But I will have found the layout plan right. set. Right. There's a set of documents then. Is well, there a way because, to make well, that clear? You know, no, I, th layout I think the issue, is, the issue is, is that you call it a landscape plan. That's not what they called it. So that's no, no, the issue is is that there's a set of plans, Carol's saying, and she's just stating what the top plan was called. No, because that's the title. It's not what the that's, the title of the, that's the title of the set. No, it's the title of that plan. That plan would have been called a layout plan. The set would have been called 100%. Don't well, we don't separate no, no, no. them one, when they come again. in. We'll keep them as a set. So, okay, what I would suggest is just to add the word layout plan set. So that people know there's more than one plan associated okay. with okay. that set. If we have to record what the first drawing says, oh, okay, and it was but, a layout but plan. But my only point is, is the only thing that we can do from a records keeping perspective is, is put what's on that first page. Because what you think of as a landscape plan, someone else might consider something else, right? They may not think of it in terms of that. They the title of that sheet else. would have said a landscape plan. It, of that sheet, in within the set. If you say so, maybe it didn't, maybe it did, I don't it know. Did, but so, but, but what I'm saying is that you can only go with what the first page says. That's fine. So, so. let's just say the landscape plan set. Set. Mm -hmm. set. I, th I think we should do that whenever we're talking about a whole group of plans. If it doesn't have a title that makes sense, like a 100% document set, we should somehow say set so everybody knows there's more than one document. Okay. Makes sense. We'll do. It matters who's asking whether it makes sense at all. So. Okay, so the last the last box, should we say the board? We usually just say the board approved instead of the planning board. Oh, yeah. uh, that's an artifact from something else. Okay. I have a question before I turn it over to Andy. Mm -hmm. On documents used in item two, where it says plans titled, do we need to reference what their title? I, I actually think that's a holdover because they've been separately numbered now. Right? What page? There is uh, no plans titled um, anymore. Page four documents mm -hmm. used, item two, where the director's report on EDR standards review, Sims Lower Park. In the next line it says plans titled, and I didn't know if there was more 
to add there? And Mike suggesting less. So it's saying that the plans that someone who someone who comes in and wants to see the plans that were used for the 100% review would ask for these things because that's what the top sheet says. Yeah, but I think I think you don't even need plans titled there, okay. right? So I think that's it? the point. I would strike oh, okay. plans titled. All right. Okay. Anything else from anybody? That's good. Carol, do you feel comfortable no. with your markup? Okay. Thank motion. You. Motion to approve as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. That's four on that one. All right. Mm -hmm. I think that'll be the. That was the tough one. Yeah, that was I the tough one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second, please. Now we're going to go to October 1st, 2012. Now nobody wanted to be the chair. Well, <laughs> exactly. You know, and the funniest part about this is my only comment is, is please put chairman after Bruce. Yeah. Because he would have been chairman at that point. I'm going to grab that title back. Uh, it's only for the purpose of these minutes. <laughs> <laughs> October 1st, 2012. October 1st, just one to the, who's present and just chair after my name. And that's all I had. Do you need it? I do. Okay. I'm not sure there you go. I don't have it. I might stay prepared. Here it is. You got it? Okay. Thanks. Sorry about that. No problem. Right. All right. So, chair. Yeah, just Bruce. Bruce, Bruce earns that for this one. <laughs> uh, Bruce, anything else on that one? Nothing. Christine? Nothing. Andy? No, nope. good. Motion? Moved. Second. Moved to approve. Second from Christine. We're switching it up for, for Carol. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. Aye. We'll like that one. Oh, yeah. Why do you have to record who moves and who approves? I don't know. Yes. I've been told that it's not critical, but it's always been the practice, so I continue it. Next. Okay. Uh, next, April 8th, 2013. Oh, I have a couple of small ones, but if you want to go, Bruce, I'll go last. Oh, okay. Um, towards the bottom of page one, after the vote, Mr. Fields moved, Ms. Sapinski second in a motion, etc. Down that last box, Carol. Mm -hmm. um, I think after the board uh, all voted in favor, the board discussed the introduction of the articles on town meeting floor. Then we sort of switch into master plan, so I would make that new agenda item, master plan, and then Ms. Kowalski provided an update, etc. Okay, so just uh, maybe create a different box? Yeah, maybe a new box, yeah. yeah. Okay. And then the agenda item. And then over on the second page, um, and again, I'm going to need the help of uh, my colleagues here, but on monitoring special permit conditions, uh, the first sentence there where I asked that these put these, the work tracking report, I think that what I might have asked was, Mr. Fitzsimmons asked that special permit conditions with regard to active projects be included in the work tracking report. I'll ask you if that sounds like something I might have said. Where are you? Oh, yeah. on page, am I on the right? This was yeah. a different topic, actually. Oh, oh it's oh, at okay. the very it's bottom. So, bottom of the uh, first page. Yeah, okay. bottom, it picks up there. So Mr. Fitzsimmons asked, that these oh, okay. put these. I said, uh, Mr. Fitzsimmons these asked that these be on. put in. Oh, okay, that's funny. Yeah, I said on. in instead of uh, instead of these, just in the work tracking report. I do remember. Okay. Yeah, I think it was okay. Mr. Fitzsimmons asked that Mr. Fitzsimmons asked that these be put in the work tracking report. Okay. That, I can live with that. But that's what I asked. Okay. Um, later in the box, it says uh, a motion to adjourn was made. I would strike that and move that down to the end of this. And um, you know, unless anybody can remember who made that motion, I just I've it. got I've got Mr. Care. Oh yeah, well, I guess we said we didn't have to. Yeah. The motion was made, seconded, and approved unanimously. Yep. Does that replace Mr. Fields on ATEB? Yeah, so right after replace Mr. Fields and uh, add Mr. Kerr, where it says a motion to adjourn, strike where it appears there, because the, just we go in to the talk bottom. about the minutes, 
and move that to the very bottom and say a motion to adjourn was made, seconded, and approved. Uh, oh, the so the the box with all of the m motions stays as is. We just move the motion down below it. Yeah, the adjourn just needs to be the thing right before the board approved these minutes. Okay. Just needs to be right above that. Yeah. Do you want to do this one? Did you say that one already? Uh, no. Okay, I had one, yeah, one more type. Yeah, the A. Yeah. Yeah, the second to the last box on the first page. That's not what you're going to In the vote box there, the second line, report to town meeting as amended, instead of as amended. Just needs an A. Yeah. yeah. Good. That's it. Oh, and Nora. That's it small typo, but um, the second box, third line, he clarified that Nora Court, I don't think there's an H on Nora. Right. Thank you. Maybe good to have her name. Small. Andy? Good. Motion? Motion to approve has amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, so that's April 8th. Moving on to July 8th. We're getting there. Um, on this one, it's just more stylistic than anything else. Um, I actually just, uh, I think there's just an extraneous thing at the beginning mm -hmm. where it says the chair called the meeting to order and the board tabled the approval of the July. I think that just needs to come out right up at the top. You agree? Um, and I think you can take out agenda item there because it's just kind of going right into business. I don't think okay. you need the, mm -hmm. the starter agenda item there. Um, that's what I had on these. Bruce, what else? Um, about halfway down that page under documents used, mm -hmm. uh, the fourth one should be site plan instead of oh, yeah. site plan. Mm -hmm. um, at the uh, last paragraph, second line, uh, I think that uh, endorsement of the July, June 24, 2013 letter from Arlington 360 regarding sequenced, and I think we want sequenced occupancy, in. question mark, sequenced occupancy for shelter break view. Sequence of occupancy. Is that the, which vote? Is the very bottom. The last of the four votes there. Mm -hmm. Sequenced occupancy, yeah. Um, and then uh, in the uh, on the following page, uh, where it says with map inclusive, I think we want map included, not inclusive. That's all I have. I don't have anything you good? Mm -hmm. Andy, good. Uh, motion. Motion to approve has amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Four on that one. Aye. I'll just let us know when you're I'll set them up. Okay. Okay, the next one we've had for a little while. It's the July 29th, 2013. Um, The only thing I just had, uh, it, it should be attorney John Leone, not David. Oh, right yes, that's his brother. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> and there's just a, uh, a typo on page three, but I don't know what you call it. Um, in in the, the longest box on the last page, uh, around six lines down, um, where it's a, underneath parking spaces, it says written communicating to restaurant staff. It's just a written communication to restaurants down. Okay. And that's, I thought, <laughs> actually, I gotta tell you, this was, a, this was a yeoman's task doing this one, Carol. Yeah. I'm very impressed with these minutes, thank you. Because mm -hmm. this You're was, uh, <laughs> reading them through, I'm like, oh yeah, right, okay, I remember that, yeah. So, mm -hmm. it brought it I back to life. <laughs> I had a couple things. On uh, page two, third line from the bottom, uh, this is in Patricia Simboli's comments. Um, 
she, where she says, it was not a sports bar, not a business about loud music, I would say featuring loud music, as opposed to about loud music. Okay. So it's not a business that features loud music. And on the third page in that long box that Mike was talk, uh, referencing a moment ago, two lines up from his correction, uh, where it says, provide a factual analysis. Uh, this isn't the big thing. I guess you could say on demand. I thought it was a factual analysis of demand of existing use of parking spaces, but it's a small thing. So. Christine? I know we don't have um, any jurisdiction over outdoor seats, but should we mention that they were proposing 200 seats were planned for the interior? right in the very first paragraph. And so many seats were proposed for the exterior. Or shouldn't we even mention it in our minutes then? Um, it didn't lead up to anything about action the board took. So, okay. so you, maybe we should. You could if you like, if you want <coughs> the record to show that it was presented, but I think very. It was present, really presented and discussed, but we had no, we said we were deferring to the Board of Selectmen, so. Yeah, I mean, I wouldn't even call it a discussion because I said we weren't going to. So, um, <laughs> so, uh, okay. so, but no, no, I'm fine if we want to reflect the fact it's, that we did not fine, discuss not. it. It's, it's <laughs> fine. We can leave it out. We can leave it out. That's fine. Okay, the second page, almost right smack in the middle, the sentence above, Roland. Okay. Okay, so if you go to the end of that sentence and hope the board could find a way to get it mm. into okay. Arlington. Yeah. So put an it in and take the in out. Get it into Arlington. Okay. It's kind of interesting to read it without the word it. Just saying the hope the, the board can find a way to get into Arlington. <laughs> get into in Arlington. <laughs> in Arlington. And there's two that's farther down. Yeah, so you don't need the second uh, in then, right? But right, you don't need the second in. To get it in, into Arlington. Yeah. Right. Where's the second in? in Arlington. So four lines up from the second to the last paragraph. He added that that. Oh, okay. Right. Thank you. That's all I have. It's like a, it's like a word search there. Yeah. <laughs> oh, actually, Andrew. Anything on these? I get to participate. Yes. No, I don't have any. <laughs> oh. I don't have any comments. Oh. 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 I think actually there shouldn't be a comma there and trivia voice on a microphone because I think it was the trivia oh, guy. And period. And then other entertainment may be provided in the function room as desired by present party. Okay. Period. Function room would be soundproofed. Other entertainment in the function room as desired by private parties. Period. Private parties hiring a room. Period. The function room would be soundproofed. Okay. I move to approve the minutes of July 29, 2013, as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Andy, I'm a little disappointed. I was hoping Andrew would actually yeah. second that one. Well, he beat me to it. Exactly. He, he, he did not want to be usurped there. <laughs> no, I'm glad I got to talk about that trivia. <laughs> <laughs> you saved me. <laughs> I was saying, I wouldn't have a comment. Okay. On uh, September 9th, this one sounds pretty familiar. Um, I just had a couple things. Number one is, is Ted is still listed on the top. Yeah, and Welcome. we still have two chairs. Oh, we still have two chairs. Well, actually, you know what? I didn't take that one away. I was okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> Please. Exactly. Um, the other thing is, uh, Carol, this is just more, I, I, I forgot to send you the resolution. Um, I don't think I ever sent it. So I sent it tonight before okay. I got here. Okay. Once I got, uh, once I was reading through these, I said I meant to send it to you. So it should be in your uh, inbox so okay. that you can include it 
as an attachment to this, if you'd like. Might be the best thing. Include an attachment, okay. Is, if that's okay with the mm -hmm. with the board, um, the resolution that I had read and that each of you had gotten a copy of, we'll just attach as a um, as an exhibit to as an exhibit to the amendment. Yeah, uh, I'm sorry, uh, as an exhibit to the uh, uh, to the minutes. And that should probably be noted. I mean, it's yeah. redundant, but documents included. Documents included. Yeah. yeah. Silly, it's the second vote. It says Mr. Fitzsimmons moved to approve, just with a D moved. In the second vote, Carol. Uh, no first page, second vote. There's two right in a row. Thank you. Good. Yeah. So, documents include um, resolution? Yeah, you could say the resolution. Okay. Right. But I would also attach the resolution to yes. the minutes, mm -hmm. if you would please. Yeah. No, I did it as Go a Word ahead. document. Yeah, okay. yeah. So that way you could just cut and paste. Thank you, uh, Bruce. Okay, on the second page, again on that vote, uh, oh, moved yeah. uh, with the, the it missing its D. Yeah, okay. yeah, I had it. Okay. Um, and um, after identifying Jonathan Book of Foley Hoa, I, I would add counsel to the board. Okay. Good. Um, after that, in the following paragraph where it says the chairman then asked the board to acknowledge that I would say all references to certificate of occupancy, yeah. comma, wherever they may appear in project documents, shall always mean the final, and I, I think maybe italicized final. So it's just absolutely clear. You know that we're talking what we're talking about, so the word "final" doesn't somehow get kind of lost in the in the text there. Uh, so, yeah, I can read that back. Well, where is the where's "final" going? Okay, so "final" goes right before "certificate of occupancy," where it's in the third line of that little paragraph. So, just to start at the top again, the so chairman. So the second reference. The first reference to certificate of occupancy needs a file before it. No, no. the second. The second. Actually, reference. why don't you read it from? Yeah. 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 So the chairman then asked the board to acknowledge that all references to certificate of occupancy, wherever they may appear in project documents, shall always mean the final certificate of occupancy. So add the. Yeah. Okay. In the next vote, there's a missing D again after moved or move. You can tell I cut and paste the, the votes. Here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's um, and I caught on with the last one. Yep. Yeah, and then the, the the next vote after that, where where the D is there, um, I, I wanted to capture the idea that we were giving the planning department staff authority, but not compelling them to. Uh, certify factual matters. So this is a very nuanced change, but what I would suggest is it read that Mr. Fitzsimmons moved that the board authorize the planning department staff to provide certification that factual matters were completed and to issue letters confirming that posting of bonds relevant to the Sims redevelopment program had indeed been posted. Can you send me that? Or yeah. do you have it written down? I have it written down. Okay. Give it to you. Right here. Thank you. Yep. First page, second to the last paragraph, about five lines up, the sentence that ends in seven, okay. or the line that ends in seven. I think that should be an AM, Department yes. of Housing and. That's right. Thank you. Oh, it's an Amber Okay. 
And then on the very last paragraph, I think we need to add a final before the certificate of occupancy on the last line. I think it's the last paragraph on the first page, Carol. Oh, yeah, on the first page, sorry. Where we're talking about the LDA and special permit will be met before final certificate of occupancy will be issued. We're talking about the temporary up above. Does that make sense? Yeah, uh, I'm sorry. So are you saying in the last paragraph, say the chairman then explained that since the land disposition agreement and special permit? Because I do think it should say that. I wasn't talking about that, but. Okay, sorry. <laughs> I just noticed it. Um, and special permit. You want to do add that not, the first line. Do not contemplate. Okay, I'm sorry, then, and then what are you saying now? Which the developer now seeks in preparation of the land. So up, up there on that line, we're talking about um, the concept of temporary certificates of op occupancy. Down in the bottom, I think then we should clarify before final certificates of occupancy will be yes, issued. Yes, okay, yep. So yep, just yep, add yep, a I final before saying. certificates. Okay. Yep. Just to make it clear. No, that's okay. And then documents used, we said the resolution. We're going to list, we should also list the forest management plan, or actually the woody Aye. vegetation management plan, because we accepted it at this meeting. But did we use it? We moved to accept it. I don't think we used well, it was given to us all, and we had it, and we accepted it. So. Uh, I don't think so. I think you did you email it to all of us? Okay. I think. Need to list it as used if we if we've used it for a discussion. That's the only. Uh, you did yep. accept. No, we did have it. Oh, okay. We got it. Yeah, yeah. We got it. Follow this. Yep. Okay. And then we should list the Sims yeah. documents. That yeah, we've got a lot of those. Yep. All those. There we were got like the four affirmative marketing plan, the master deed. There's quite a few. Do you want me to read them off, Carol? I got them right here. Okay, I've got resolution, Woody Veg Management Plan, Affirmative Marketing Plan, Master Deed. What else? Okay, hold on. Master Deed for condo, Master Deed for. Right, the primary condominium, Declaration of Trust for the primary yep. condominium trust, Master Deed for the secondary or A360 townhouse condominium, Declaration of Trust for the A360. Townhouse Condominium Trust. Okay. Yeah. Go cool. off the time easily. Yeah. Um, what Should else I you just got copy there? whatever is in the votes? Each one had a document? Well, I think it's even more than that. It's that you well, are they in the, so they're in the votes like that, are they? Uh, I mean, it's this no. package right here. Do you want just the package? Or do you want me to read it? I can do it either way. If you don't mind reading. Okay. So, do you have the woody vegetation? Yes. Okay, so you got woody vegetation. Then I've got, I've got middle income affordable units. First Amendment. Wait, th is that all one middle income? income affordable units. This is the same document. First Amendment to regulatory agreement and declaration. Restrictive covenants for rental project. Gotcha. Um, for rental project. Yep. And then the next one is local initiative program. And then ditto, the exact same title as what I just gave you for the other one. If you want to. Middle income? No. Nope. So or local the First initiative. Amendment to regulate. So it's local initiative program. And yep. then it's First Amendment to regulatory agreement and declaration of restricted covenants for rental project. It's the exact same kind of last two lines as was on the middle income affordable units. Yep. First Amendment of. No, First Amendment to. To. Regulatory agreement and declaration. 
restrictive covenants for rental project. Okay. Then the Arlington 360. Affirmative marketing plan. Okay. Boom. And we've got the, <laughs> the master deed of the A360 townhomes condominium. I think that's enough. Yeah. Ooh, sorry, I got you. I got you. Then we've got the Declaration of Trust okay. of the A360 Townhomes Condominium Trust. Okay. The Master Deed of the A360 primary condominium. And the declaration of trust So there's two declaration of yes, trust. Yes, there's two each. Declaration of trust of the A360 primary condominium trust. Good. I'm good, thank you. Anybody else with any comments? That's good. My last name is missing an L in present. There you go. <laughs> Perfect. <laughs> Said I'm not voting for these minutes. Exactly. <laughs> Get two ends, two L's. I'll have to remember that. Okay. Move to approve as amended. Second. Well, Andrew was going to get on the board. <laughs> uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 I keep holding back. <laughs> Anything else? Thank you, Carol. <laughs> thank you, Carol. Yes, yes. actually, thank you, Carol. Thank you. A big thank you. Yeah, was a Sorry, it took so long. long. No, uh, so we'll have another exer similar exercise, depending upon the uh, whether we try to tackle them all, um, or you know, another half, and then another half. No, that sounds great. I'm looking forward to that. Exactly. And then we'll be caught up. Yeah, we'll be caught up. Yeah. yeah, good. And I will entertain one more motion. I'll move to adjourn. Second. There we go. There we go. <laughs> all in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.